A very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to this week's edition of The Agenda. My name is Toiwan Jabala, your host. Tonight I'm having very, very special guests uh, in the form of uh, former Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Libertina, Libertina Amadila, <laughs> as well as... Uh, <laughs> as well as uh, Hank Maj, he is a veteran politician, uh, having of course served and still serving as a matter of fact, as president of the Republican Party. Let me welcome uh, uh, Dr. Amadila. Thank you for joining us, really. Uh, I see you are winning in technology there. <laughs> I struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I can face it. <laughs> Okay. No, you are doing very well. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so of course, the the 26th of August, as we know, is uh, Heroes Day in Namibia, and uh, it is for that reason that we just want to, you know, unpack things as uh, they relate to that day, um, having a bit of hype ahead of the day. Uh, Dr. You joined the liberation struggle many, many years ago as a young girl. Uh, what, what motivated you at the time to join the liberation struggle? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> there was a wind of change blowing in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. We who were studying, I was doing my standard nine in Cape Province because Hostinium had only up to standard eight. So I had to go to Cape Province to go and finish my matric. And when I went there, I went to Standard 9. But there was wind blowing, people leaving the country, young people leaving the country, Southern Africa, Rhodesia was Southern Rhodesia, Northern Rhodesia, they, they were still, Tanganyika was the independent, Tanzania was the Tanganyika, uh, independent country. So mm. we were all going to Tanganyika, to scholarships from countries like Poland gave scholarships for medical students to go and study in Poland and Warsaw. So it was given to Swapo and then I was one of the students and Dr. Shibute was another one. So we went to Dar es Salaam. So the wind was blowing to all of us to the Tanganyika. People from those other South African countries which were not independent we all met in Dar es Salaam. Mm. So it was a wind of change blowing. We wanted to leave to come and liberate ourselves. The apartheid system was terrible here, ill-treating us as non-human people, actually. You could not get proper education and I wanted to become a doctor. Mm. Since I went to a hospital in Ochibarongo to see how our sick people were treated by by those people. One young teacher died who had a broken leg football match on Saturday. He was only seen on Tuesday by the doctor and he died. Mm. Complications. So this type of things were happening. And I was really fed up with this whole system. I wanted to become a doctor. Yeah. Now, as you know, there were no women doctors, black, only white, colored, I should say colored, shimming doctor and my, 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 my village boy also, Ihuwa, was the doctor. Mm -hmm. And then I mm -hmm. felt I'm going to be a doctor. Then I got a letter from a friend who was in Ghana who said, Doctor, uh, Libertina, you must leave. Don't even go back to Cape Town after you stand at Nehe. Just go to Dar es Salaam. You get a scholarship. To I'm in Ghana here, he says. And there are women doctors here, black girls like you. And I think that motivated me. So I didn't go back for, for standard 10. I went to work in Swagop Moon to get of money. And then I left the country. Indeed. Doctor, so thank you for education. that elaborate uh, answer. It was too much. Uh, thank you. Yeah. listened to Dr. Libertina Madela speaking there. I'm sure you are acquainted with a bit of uh, history to that effect. But of course, you're not. You're, you're, I suspect you are slightly younger than her. <laughs> Much younger. <laughs> Much younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when those things were happening around those years, um, as, a, as an Africana young man that time yourself, um, what was the situation like 
like for you at the time? Yeah, you know, at that stage, I was, uh, I would say when the, when the arms struggle started, uh, I was still very young. Yeah. But let's go back a little bit before then. Mm. I grew up on a farm in the Uchu district. And um, for, for us, you know, having grown up in that, in that apartheid system, it was, it was uh, I mean, you, you never, you never uh, thought about it even, you know, yeah. whether it was right or wrong. Um, I was in good relationship with the people working for us on the farm, yeah. uh, also between my father and them. And we were, seemed to be a lucky community of, not lucky, but a uh, uh, happy community. Mm. It's just only after that, you know, in, when I uh, start to finish school, that, uh, that uh, I heard my father starting to talk about this apartheid issue. Mm. And uh, only then did it start to, to make us think, but what is, what is really going on? Mm -hmm. um, after that, I mean, long after that, a lot of people wanted to ignore that. Mm. But in our house, in our house, it was discussed, um, not with us, but I could hear the, the grown-ups um, talking about that. Mm. And, uh, and then slowly but surely, you know, you start to, 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 to see things happening. But now you must also remember, we grew up in Ochu, mm -hmm. not in Wintuk. You know, I, I mean, I came to Wintuk, I think, before I got to matric, I was in Wintuk three times. Uh -huh. uh, twice for athletics, yeah. and then you're here for a day and you go back. So uh, you were not in the mainstream where you could hear a lot of people arguing about this. It mm. was basically in a, in a white community. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me at that stage, it, it, it started to worry. But again, I mean, you were in this system. It is a government. You've got a government. And uh, it seemed everything is going OK. Mm. But it was not at that stage that I could put myself yeah. into the shoes of the people who were oppressed. Mm -hmm. And, to, and to, to try and think, what is it that they're going through? Mm. Uh, as I said, on the farm, I mean, all those uh, black guys were my friends. We were playing and we were all happy. And it, it seems to me, it seems fine. Mm, mm, mm. But later on, and I suppose we will come to that. Yeah. But later on, when I left school, go to university, then I start to realize, but something is wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, doctor, I hope you are still on the line. Um, what can you see me still? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can see you very well. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. uh, um, the, did you under, did you then? I mean, of course, you you mentioned that you went to school in exile partially to fulfill your dream of becoming a doctor, but also to, of course, forge the struggle course, from yeah. there. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> What is it that motivated people like yourself, young women, with uh, dreams to remain uh, in exile, uh, fighting in the manner that you did, um, and especially when this, the struggle was so long? I mean, uh, a lot of people would have given up halfway. I'm sure a lot of your friends or mm -hmm. some of the people that you knew might, might have given up along the way. But what was the motivating factor to remain true to the cause throughout? <coughs> I, I think, you know, when you go for things like you want to become a doctor and you want to join the struggle, you want to come and liberate your country, you just drop these sort of things. It's not very easy. For, for us in, 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 in the Namibian context, we finished our studies and we came back. We didn't do like other African countries used to do. The students study and then they work in England, they work where, where. We finished our, as soon as I got my diploma, my, 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 I came back to, to Africa. Mm. First to Tanganyika to come and pay back because they really helped me. I did my internship in Muhimbili Hospital. After that, then, of course, the struggle continued. I was looking after our struggle guys. If somebody was injured somewhere, I used to go collect the patients, <clears throat> take them to my clinic, to my hospital, 
in young also, I mean, the job started, so you could give up. At least no Namibian, I know, except some people who had, yeah, we had some people who sort of, you know, the Shibangas and Nyongos and people like that, but individuals, but majority of us through to the struggle. We wanted to liberate our country. When once you start doing that, you can never go back to this apartheid system. Mm -hmm. I think it was very, very strong motivation to see through the struggle and become as somebody qualified to do with the jobs and things like that, yeah. Indeed. Hank, when you, when you then, of course, you, like you said, you know, things started while you were still very young and didn't really fully appreciate uh, what was happening. But as you grew older and you saw these oppressed majorities, a number of them leaving the country, did you understand the justification for that? Or did you think they were just uh, uh, people really maybe misunderstanding things and therefore leaving the country? I think I could understand to a certain extent. Uh, I, when I left school, I went to the Air Force in South Africa. You know, we were all in, had to go for one year. Yeah. Fortunately, I was uh, never called up to to the border wall, for which I'm very, really, very grateful. Mm. Um, but then, then when I, when I, after that, I went to Stellenbosch University to study uh, civil engineering. And I got to see the student politics. And obviously in South Africa and a university like Stellenbosch, that is actually a liberal university. Mm -hmm. uh, some people would say not, but it was, and still is, um, after Wits and, and, and uh, Ikees. Uh, but what I saw immediately when I got there, and I was, I was not really interested in student politics. In fact, I was not interested in politics at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I could see uh, at Stellenbosch that the, 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 the conservatives, the National Party, <coughs> were in total control. Um, I saw that with the election of the Students' Council, the way that is manipulated by by the National Party. We had a wide range of people in my, in my residence, Volkhanov, uh, must be without any doubt the most liberal uh, uh, residence in Stalamos even today. Mm -hmm. um, people were allowed to speak their minds. Uh, we already had uh, some black uh, students at, at the hostel, at the residence. Um, but, but then, then it started to annoy me. You know, you could see that the National Party were, they, they, they actually used the student council to influence people. Hmm. And that really annoyed me to the point where I didn't want to do, have anything to do with the uh, politics uh, at, at, uh, at uh, university. Those were the times, John Foster's son, Peter Foster, uh, there was a lot. Hmm. Jan Yenis, um, they were all there at the same time. And, uh, but I distanced myself completely. I focused on my studies, I focused on my sport. I was uh, always very really keen on sport. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but during that time, obviously, things started to change in Namibia. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when you come back from uh, for, for school, uh, university holidays, you know, we were talking to my father and that was a time that he went to New York, invited by South Africa just to go and see what is happening at the United Nations. And uh, he came back and he was, he was devastated mm -hmm. to see the way South Africa was dealt with by the Security Council and also the National Assembly there. And the fact that when South Africa stood up to talk, to speak, then everybody left the, 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 the auditorium. Mm -hmm. and, and then he came back and he said, can't go on, apartheid cannot work. There is not a question about that. And so that is when I start to pick up yeah. on what is really going on. Indeed. And Swapu was already then organized uh, in exile. And uh, yeah, and for the rest, we can talk about that. Indeed.
we go for a short break and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, we continue with our conversation with uh, Dr. Libertina Mazila and uh, Hank Mudge. Um, before we went on a break, uh, Dr. Uh, Hank was talking about uh, the role, the role of, um, of how he saw things uh, uh, from his perspective as a young man at the time. Tell me what was your perception of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, people like Hank Mudge, his father, who he mentioned earlier on, um, I mean, Hank has always insisted that his, his, father, his father is actually a, a freedom fighter in his own right. Uh, is that the perception that you share of, of, of the late uh, Dirk Mudge, as a matter of fact? No, no, I only met late Dirk Mudge after, after independence when I came back. Yeah. Yeah. Because I left before they became, you know, Daura Hood joined them. But I came back after independence, but that is where I met his father. But when, you, when you've been hearing, of course, I mean, he, he was a, a, a critical figure in uh, Namibian politics at the time, wh while you guys were in exile. What were you hearing about this Dirk Maj? What, what, what is it that you remember? In, in in ex I don't know, I never heard of him. Okay. In exile, when we were there, we had our own radio, mm. swap radio, and it was just politics and freedom fighting and what's going on and our struggle, what, where we were our soldiers. And so we didn't hear this local politics of sitting white people who were trying to, yeah, uh, we, we knew about DTA, yeah. I, I didn't even hear about DTA. After I came back from my study in Sweden, yeah. then I heard about DTA because of Kaura, classmate of mine, Kaura, and many of them joined DTA. They mm. were there with them. So we were hearing about, but then it was a big fight. We were now in the war. So mm. we, they, they were our enemies. We were fighting them. Indeed. What, yes. What? So, Hank, you were enemies of uh, the Swapo people. Why, why, why were you perceived as enemies? Why, why do you think they perceived you as enemies? Because they were blocking our independence. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm asking. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. I'm asking Mr. Much to respond to that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I think uh, Hank Mudge was a lot of misconceptions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, in 1974, and I think there's a lot of a lot of of, of information that peop that were kept away from people. Yeah. I'll just mention a few. Yeah. Uh, the one was that uh, what was said at the time is that Swapu was a communist organization, 
and they want to establish a communist regime in Namibia. Mm. Um, and that was, that was the reason given to us and the reason why South Africa, South Africa became involved mm. militarily, mm. obviously. I mean, Namibia could not, we didn't have an army to mm. talk about. Mm. So, um, and that was, that was uh, around about 1974, mm. when my father then, when he came back from the United Nations, went to John Forster, said to him, he actually said to him before that, but then he went to him and said to him that uh, uh, Namibia must be allowed to decide on its own future. Mm. Uh, not, uh, they would talk about, uh, you know, bringing in Namibia as a fifth province of South Africa and, and, and nonsense like that. Mm. So, uh, so then he asked my, uh, because South Africa was obviously the mandate holder, mm. um, uh, legitimately the mandate holder, uh, over Namibia, yes. so that, that in those days, Southwest Africa. So he then he then went to him and said to to to, to Minister Foster that uh, whether he can, my father can speak to the to the black leaders in Namibia to talk about the future, mm. and he got, he got permission, and then he came back. He actually met uh, Chief Clement Kapoor in New York while I was there, mm. and I think that is where it all started when he spoke to 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 Chief Kapoor and he heard about. He struggled to get petitions to the United Nations and, yeah. and, and, and so on. So, so when he came back, then he started first with uh, Chief Clemens Kapoor because he was a very important leader in, mm. in their struggle for, for independence. Yeah. Um, so once he and uh, Chief Kapoor understood one another and, and actually trusted one another, that yeah. was a big thing mm. for, for my father to be trusted because as a white man, part of the apartheid government at that stage still, mm -hmm. uh, to be talking to black leaders in this country about the future of Namibia. You know, everybody mm -hmm. would say, but what, what, what is behind this? What yeah. is the agenda? What is up to, yeah. So he had to, he had to, 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 to get the trust of these people. And that is how it started. Yeah. Now, there was a lot of things said at the time. Uh, yeah, then it went, obviously, when you have all these, and those were the internal leaders, mm -hmm. uh, traditional leaders in Namibia. Um, and when you start to talk about these things and bring them together, then you must move in some direction. You cannot yeah. keep on talking. Yeah. And that is where the idea of the Turnala Alliance started, the uh, Turnala Conference started. It's not the South African thing. Mm. People say it was South Africa who, it was uh, uh, making of South Africa. That's absolute nonsense. My father did it mm. with the internal leaders in Namibia. Yeah. Um, so then, it's, uh, then that started. Mm. Um, and, uh, and uh, what happened was that, uh, as, as far as I know, and, I, and I, one can read the book again, mm. um, uh, Swapo was invited to attend. Mm. Um, they declined. Uh, after the Turinala conference, or during the Turinala conference, for my father, he was a very senior person at that time in the in National Party government, the apartheid government. Mm. And, and he was very serious that, that they must make progress towards towards uh, self, uh, you know, uh, for, for us in Namibia to decide our, 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 our own future. Yes. And then at some stage, he realized that his colleagues from the National Party was also in the, in the Turnala conference, mm. were trying to sabotage us, uh, the, the conference. And then, and then a, a big fright uh, broke loose. And that was basically the reason yeah. why he then left the, the National Party and started the Republican Party. And this is also something that the people must ask for themselves. You know, if the Republican Party, and for that matter, the DTA, was trying to, <clears throat> to prevent independence, why would, why would my father have called the party that he started the Republican Party? You don't have a Republican Party in any other state than in the Republic. Mm. Uh, I mean, that, that is something that people don't understand. So he had that vision, even yeah. in 1977, when he started the Republican Party, that we will become independent. And then, the, the, obviously, the first election called by, by South Africa in Namibia, because obviously the white people in Namibia were very, very, very uh, worried and, and very angry mm. about the, the way things are going. Mm. And we're going at that stage because they see it's, it's going to change. There's yeah. not even a question about it. The apartheid system is going to change. Yes. Um, because the black leaders got more say uh, they were more outspoken. Yeah. Uh, they got more publicity, um, and then and then uh, P. W. Boerta in South Africa decided that he wants an election. He wants to see 
what is the support yeah. of the different people. Now, I must also, I, what I forgot to say was, when my father started the Republican Party, yeah. then a month later, because the Tudenala then broke up, yeah. Um, because of the actions of the National Party colleagues at, of my father. Hmm. Uh, and then all the other leaders in the Turunala Conference yeah. um, came together and then they formed the Democratic Turunala Alliance. Um, also, not a making of South Africa, that yeah. was a making between themselves. Yes. They decided. And then, and then P.W. Wurta wanted to have that election in 1978, where the DTA got 80% of the votes, mm. eighty percent of the people of Namibia voted. That was the first yeah. one man, one vote election in the country. That was for us in Namibia mm. a, a wonderful occasion. I mean, if I can think back and I think about the, the excitement among the people of Namibia, you can think for yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, for the first time, they can vote, um, and 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 the euphoria that we that that we that we experienced was just unreal. And again. Mm. Schwab was invited to yeah. take part in that election, yeah. and they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Let me. Let, let me so oh, they wouldn't accept it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 Dr. Madila, the why was um, Schwab opposed uh, to those elections? Did you consider them sham elections, or you just felt that? Uh, you know, let me tell you something. Yes. When I was in the struggle. We didn't sit around having conferences and meetings. We were fighting to liberate the country from, from these oppressors. Mm -hmm. So by the time they were holding these conferences, I had no TV, no radio. I was in the bush there running the health of the people and liberating the country. So what was happening in Namibia, even the local SWAPO members who were, who were locally here, were the only ones who could maybe as answered or who were invited. But we were we were not we couldn't come from our struggle in the bush and club to the no 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 they would have arrested us. I remember that they, Sam Neoma and and Bohamba came back once but they were they, they, they were they were almost arrested so they went back again. So we, we didn't have anything to do with this Tunhale thing locally. We were liberating their country. Mm. But fighting and liberating the country. But that we is, had local swap members, yes, but yeah. we out there had no connection with this Tunale stories he's talking about. <laughs> but but tell me, Doctor, now, um, do you think that um, the what do you think was key in bringing about our independence? Was it uh, that liberation struggle, that armed struggle, or do you think that uh, what? Uh, DTA and uh, it was the arms struggle. It was the arms struggle. <laughs> yeah, it was the arms struggle. <laughs> but but uh, you, you agree? Was it was it the war that brought peace, or is it uh, the mobilization that the likes of your father did here internally? Well, I think it was the 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 the, 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 the and the these cowards and them who were DTA people, <laughs> and we didn't. That is why we came with. A concept of let us have liberation and let us have peace yeah. in, in, in reconciliation. Because if we did not have a policy of reconciliation, there was going to be another problem with us coming back, with the locals who were joining these DTAs and them, the better. So we decided let us have uh, uh, unity and let us have reconciliation. Because it's our people who are confused. Let's get all of them, whether they were Kusuts or whatever, let us reconcile with everybody. So that is what we have that policy. Part yeah. of the policy was that. Yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk about reconciliation in a moment. But uh, Hank, um, the, what, what would you define as the liberation struggle of Namibia from your perspective? Is it what, what constituted uh, the, the struggle for, in, for independence from your perspective? You know, if I, if I, if I, yeah, it's, uh, I just want to make sure that I understand the question. Um, From Swapo's side, they believe that the liberation struggle was uh, taking up arms and fighting. That is the struggle. Is yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. What, what, what happened internally in Namibia was that, uh, and I think this is also something that was, that was, uh, uh, people were misinformed 
and, and uh, it's still not uh, resolved, this issue about Kufut and, and Swati F. Uh, you must just remember, when, 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 when uh, Swapu started the, 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 the war, the liberation struggle, um, uh, and as I say, I mean, the perception was that they were a communist organization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to establish a, a communist regime in Namibia. Yeah. The people who helped them in the struggle were the Russians, the East Germans, uh, the Cubans. Um, so it was, it was, uh, that was the perception and the facts that, were, that, were, that we were told. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when South Africa came here, obviously they wanted to stop the communist uh, um, onslaught yes. uh, on our northern border. They didn't want it to happen on the, on the Orange River. Yes. And now when they, when they started this, I mean, they, con they convinced our people we're not fighting against Namibians, we're fighting against communists. Mm. Um, and and so that the communists, whether it was Russia, whether it was East Germany, were using SWAPO to achieve their goal mm. and to take over Namibia. That was what our people were told. Mm. This is why our people joined the army yeah. uh, as Kufut and as SWATF to, to oppose communism, not, not to, to, to kill their own brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, so, in other words, and this is the misconception that, 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 that we had uh, or that we have today is to say that, yeah, but they were fighting, they were fighting their, own, their own people. I mean, then the same can be said about Swapo. Mm. We were trying, uh, from the DTA side, mm. we were trying to convince the people uh, to accept independence, especially the white population, which was very difficult. Mm. Uh, but the Republican Party at that stage represented more than... 50% of the white people, which made it a little bit easier, mm. but it was very difficult. Um, obviously, after that election in 1978, yeah. South Africa had no choice but to allow an interim government where, where the black leaders were also involved as deputy ministers, ministers, and so on. So everything changed, and that interim government had control over everything yeah. except education and, and, and uh, the armed forces. Yeah. So. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that, that we must be very careful to, to label Kufut and Swati F as the enemy. They were protecting the people of Namibia at the time against communism. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what happened was, and this is also not always been told uh, and understood, Swapu came into Namibia on sorties and killed people in Namibia, their own people. Yeah. Now, if you, if you are accusing Swati F and Kufut killing their people or their, our own people on, the, on that side of the border. What, what then about the people who were killed in Namibia? Mm. I mean, uh, uh, Pastor Njoba was yeah. killed by Swapu in, in Wamland. Yeah. Uh, Shagai was killed on the, on the stage right next to my father, shot by, 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 by Swapus. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, those, <laughs> that, that happened. Yeah. So you can't say that is fine. But if you kill people on that side of the border in order to protect our country, yeah. And I mean, you must just remember, I mean, they, they didn't drive around with the flags and say, we are now the Cubans or we are the East Germans or we are the Russians and there's the Swapos. Whatever happened on that side of the border was the communists. Mm. And, 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 and our people defended us um, uh, with South Africa yeah. against those people. So when they came into contact with those people, they shot. I hear you. Uh, and, and, and whoever it was, they, yeah. they wouldn't know whether it was Swapos or whether it was this or that. Yeah. So, but in the meantime, yeah. the DTA leaders were working very hard to try and convince the people of Namibia that we should become independent. And, and so I think, and in the end, what happened was, mm. Swapu didn't win the war, so the liberation win. struggle. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. It was a negotiated settlement because I think they realized, and South Africa realized, at the time yeah. that uh, it Brilliant. cannot carry on like this. But just yeah. one thing that I also need to mention. Yes. What happened was, also in 1982, whether, when they went to, I think it was in Dar es Salaam, uh, where, they, where they discussed it, what, they call, what is now known as the 82 principles. Yes. At that stage, Sam Nyoma said he's not interested in a democratic solution. He's, he's, he's on record for having said that. He's not interested in a democratic solution in Namibia. He wants to take over Namibia by force. I hear you. We'll go and that happened. we we'll go for a break. We, we, we go for a quick break and then we, we come and continue.
continue. Um, Dr. Madila, the, yeah. the, the, we, you know, the, we, we, we were, you alluded briefly to the concept of uh, reconciliation. Um, reconciliation is going to be very difficult to be achieved in Namibia if both parties, uh, SWAPO and those that fought against SWAPO, both believe to have been correct in the pursuit of, uh, of their own goals. Uh, reconciliation essentially means people admitting that uh, they wronged each other. But we don't seem to have that consensus yet. Uh, you know, Hank here says uh, they were fighting for the people of Namibia. You are saying Swap was fighting for the people of Namibia. How are we ever going to sit around the table and say we, we wronged each other and therefore let's reconcile? I, I don't think that, <clears throat> that uh, we have not reconciled. I think Namibia, after we, after independence, we we, we came and voted. They, they, they won the we saw they won the 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 votes. We liberated the country. We came up with the reconciliation, and I think we have reconciled in Namibia because we are not we we are not fighting black and white or anything anymore. We are just yeah. I think it was a very peaceful. After independence, we had a lot of peace. Mm. So I think we have reconciled. I remember that much, I don't, not that much, the one who is speaking now is also either his brother who is an architect or somebody who helped me on my farm yes. to design the farm for me. So we have, we have met, we have reconciled. I don't see any, any war or any bad feelings between black and white people yet. No more. Yes. Uh, Even Dora has joined to Apolita. You see what I mean? Stone Dita is supporter. Yes, joined to Apo. Indeed. But, uh, so, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so tell me, Doctor, um, of course, you, you spoke about how you felt that white people at the time mistreated uh, black people. Uh, you, you spoke about the example in Oshivarongo where a woman died uh, those years. But eventually, Swapo started embracing uh, some of the white people, the Anton, Lubo Anton Lubowski's, the, the, the heart. We, the we don't know until now who killed Ant Anton Lubowski. He was a strong Swapo supporter, that guy. He was a Swapo member, and yeah. he was killed. Yeah, yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah, but um, yeah. I, I just, I Not just, yeah. yeah. No, I just meant to ask whether we then started having um, you know, Swapo started having uh, a softer outlook on white people, especially those that believed in the goals of the of the liberation struggle at the time. Um, but but maybe let, let, let me put this question to you, Dr. Libertina Mazila. The which white people? You don't have to mention names necessarily, and I also don't want to make it a black and white thing. But I think for the for the benefit of this conversation, it's important. Um, do, it is a wrong conversation because I'm a medical doctor. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a soldier or professional army, whatever it is. But I mean, put the question. Let me hear. Yes. No. No. Just to say, do we do? Can we can we settle the debate? Maybe not tonight, but just to say that uh, white people too contributed to the liberation of this country. And if yes, which ones? You mean, uh, what you can say is white people who are joined swap of members yeah, also, did not go to the war to go and fight with arms, but they were uh, con they contributed also to the, to the, to the, uh, yeah, to, to the liberation of, 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 of Namibia. The, the Lubovskis, and there are many of them, you see the Minister of uh, Agriculture now, Yeah. And then uh, there were other lot of Germans also who were Swapo members, who were locally here, remained Swapo members. Mm. So we we had no, it was not a black and white war anymore, because it was actually not a black war, a black and white war. It was a war we wanted to be liberated and to come back and run our country and live like people, out of this apartheid nonsense. That was the main thing we did. Mm. We were not fighting colors. We were fighting the terrible apartheid system which was oppressing us black people. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. We, will, we will be, will be, okay. Hank, um, the, the, dep the former deputy prime minister seemed to suggest that uh, only white people that uh, <laughs> aligned with Swapo <laughs> can be described as, uh, as, liberate, as liberators. No, I'm not, I didn't say so. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah. that we had white people who were members of Swapo. Oh, okay. Who were locally here. Okay, wonderful. Good. So it, does, it was not a war of black and white. The, 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 we were fighting the oppressive system of apartheid. Wonderful, wonderful. To get them out of our country so that we can run, as we are doing now, run our country with people who are Namibians, black and white, all of us, to run the country. And what, that is what we are doing. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. <coughs> um, okay, so, so Hank, um, give me your... Who, who was your hero? Who is your hero? It's uh, August. August 26 is coming up very soon. Who are your heroes? But uh, ideally, a Namibian hero. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very easy, easy, easy answer for me. So far? Uh, very, very easy. Uh, yeah. Because I grew up with him, yeah. uh, my father, and uh, I know that he was, he had no hidden agenda. Yeah. It was very, very serious, um, um, and I think very few people, if any, can fault him yeah. on what he did since the day he decided that he is going to change apartheid in this country in '74. Yeah. Uh, starting to speak to the black uh, internal leaders, um, and right through, mm. uh, even until he died uh, last year, he was very positive and optimistic despite what was going on in the country. But no, there's, there's not even a question. You know, the one thing that, that is important to, to remember yeah. and to know is that he was never under any pressure mm. to leave the National Party. Yeah. Never. Um, he was under no pressure whatsoever mm. to talk to the black leaders in the country mm -hmm. uh, and to try and get a, a different, and a, another dispensation, in other words, to get rid of apartheid. He was mm. never pressurized. He yeah. was, uh, South Africa were under pressure. Even the, even the Namibian government at that stage was an up, the apartheid government under the National Party. Yes. They were not under pressure to change. Mm -hmm. um, although there were a war going on on the border, or started, just only started then. Um, but they were not really under pressure. Mm. And so when my father came with this idea that, that we need to change, yeah. um, he was under no pressure from nobody. He did it because he was absolutely 100% convinced that this must be done. Yeah. Okay, one can say that you know, he was in his late 30s. Why uh, did it take him so long? Mm. But the same with us. We thought that the system was fine, it is okay, until you really start to think about it and start to talk. So, so for me, um, without any doubt, mm. uh, I would say, <clears throat> and people will say, I'm, I'm, I'm very, maybe say that I'm very arrogant to say this. But having seen what happened from that perspective, there is no question in my mind uh, that my father was, without any doubt, the biggest statesman this country ever produced. Mm -hmm. Without any doubt. Mm -hmm. um, because he went against his own people. Mm -hmm. And we were called names. I can't, I can't tell you what we were called mm -hmm. during those days when we left the, the National Party and when the Republican Party was started. We were called names, my mother, uh, my father, uh, my, my, my sisters myself, um, that I can't, I can't repeat here, by, by white people. Mm. Um, so, 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 and he, and he endured that, and he was, he was stuck on his path. Um, and I think, I think without any doubt, yeah. um, that is my, my uh, biggest hero. Yeah. Uh, um, I think, uh, I would have, I would have loved to see what would have happened if he was the, the president of this country. Yes. Uh, because of his views and his, his uh, point of departure was to get rid of apartheid at yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've, always and, and every money. single and every single institution. Uh, that is also why I think he played a major role when. Um, Yeah, please, please. Uh, that is please. also why I think he played a major role, and is also acknowledged with the writing of the Constitution. Yes. Um, what he what he tried to achieve was never tried to 
to uh, to try and and negotiate yeah. uh, on behalf of the white people. Yeah. Never. Mm -hmm. uh, he, what he did was he, he negotiated on behalf of the people of Namibia, mm. and I think he made uh, he made uh, with uh, President Gainkop at that stage as a chairperson and all the others involved. Yes, they made a made a massive contribution. Indeed, uh, and then also the other heroes. <coughs> the yeah. other heroes, I would say, was and were the were the were the people that that left the National Party with him. Mm. Uh, to form the Republican Party. Yeah. Okay. At that stage, it was a young, uh, a white party. For obviously, you know, they, mm. as a national party, were party for whites, and and they are also heroes. They were young people. Most most of the people who, who left with my father was young. Yeah. And then also also the leaders in the DTA. I mean, yeah. they got castigated for 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 what <clears throat> what they trying to do and been. I hear you. Uh, so, uh, so the Kapoors, uh, yeah. the Kauras, the, mm. the uh, you know, Kashi the, from from the Sun people, and yeah. uh, and I can mention all those names. I think, thank you, Hans. I think yes. they uh, they uh, they may played a major role. And the one thing that must be remembered also is after '78 that election, we didn't have a white government anymore. We didn't have an apartheid government anymore. Although South Africa was still the mandate holder yeah. and were in control of, of education yeah. uh, and also the defense force, uh, Namibia was, was, was running their own show. We I didn't have money. We yeah. didn't get the billions and billions of, of aid that Swabu got after independence. But I, I, mean, think, you've, I think you've made your point. Hank. Yeah. I, I, I thank you. Um, uh, finally, to, uh, final question to you, Dr. Amazila, is, uh, is uh, then... I, I don't know whether you wanted to say something to, inter, to interject Hank there, but if not... No, 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 no. I mean, he's talking about his white team, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not part of that. <laughs> okay, please go ahead. Yeah, as, yeah, as, far as, yeah. as far as your hero is concerned, who, who is your biggest hero? Uh, I told you that my grandmother. I'm not talking about heroes uh, of, of men or uh, other people who are fighting. My hero is my grandmother who brought me up. Yeah. Because the way she, she was just absolutely out of this world. What I am today is what my grandmother put in me. Uh -huh. So those people who see me as doing good things, it is my grandmother's teaching. Uh -huh. So in my, in my communities, my hero is my, my grandmother. Uh, what, 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 what was your grandmother's name? Paulina. Paulina, but that is... She has a hero. I, I, I told you my grandmother was kidnapped by Nama warriors in Olonahi. Mm -hmm. And then they gave her, Pauline is a church name she was given, but her name is Yeri Morukoro. Yeri Morukoro, the hero name mm -hmm. is Yeri Morukoro. It's in the church. Indeed. She translated it that way. Indeed. Yeri Morukoro. Oh, oh. That was his name, yeah. I came to learn that name when I came back from my studies abroad because yeah. then we discovered that my grandmother was a part of a twin. She had a twin sister. Uh -huh. She had a twin sister also. So this thing we didn't know because my grandmother was kept taken by Nama warriors and brought in France on day. And we, we were born in France on day not knowing that other family. Hmm. Until I came back from the struggle, when I was trying to write my book, that is when I learned this whole history. And my my twin grandmother, my grandmother's twin sister, mm. her grandsons are also still alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Two of them, I met them. Yeah. So that, that that's the story. Wonderful. My Wonderful. So th th thank you, Doctor, for your time today and. Uh, uh, happy Heroes Day. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's our day. Wonderful, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Hank, th th thank you very much uh, for joining uh, in this conversation today. I think uh, people would say, but why are we talking about these things, black, white, history? But I think uh, for moments like this, <coughs> it's always important to reflect. Not everybody knows, especially the younger people where we came from. And I think when you provide perspectives like you do, uh, I think it, it happened, it, it, it helps to change also perspectives of people. So thank you for always making time and, uh, and, and sharing what you know with us.
Yeah, I think if I can just conclude, you know, I think uh, you're quite right. We need to talk about this. Um, when you're in a fight, uh, like uh, those days, the DTA and Swapo, yeah. I mean, obviously, everyone wants to prove that he's right um, and then also um, intimidate people and have uh, propaganda that is, that is been thrown around. That is not always true. Yeah. Um, my, my biggest worry currently is that uh, I know that Dr. Amatila mentioned about national reconciliation. Now, I think our people made it easy. Mm. The people of Namibia are without any doubt the most wonderful people in Africa. Maybe along with Zimbabweans, yeah. they also got uh, also wonderful people. And we are peace-loving people mm. and, and patient, mm -hmm. much too patient for my liking. I mean, we should stand up for things that is wrong yeah. much earlier, but we've got wonderful people in this country. So it should actually, and it was actually very easy to reconcile. But the problem is you cannot, you cannot talk about reconciliation on the one side and, and everybody wants to embrace it. Mm -hmm. But then you keep something like this Kufut and Swati F issue mm. on the other side and, and you don't want to reconcile that. Yeah. Because you cannot say you reconciled if you've got uh, uh, war veterans uh, acknowledge like only the plan veterans, but you're not acknowledging the Kufut and Swati F. Yeah. They, they had the reason why they fought that. And, and I know that is a sticking point that is, uh, that is not easy, mm. uh, but we must, make, we must take a decision and we must recognize those people. Once that is done, then we can say, fine, now we have reconciled. Now we have reconciled. But until that happens, we can talk as much as we can. Those people are really suffering. Yes. And it is, it is not the right thing to do. But I'm, 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 I'm so excited about people. There's a lot of other stuff that we can discuss. Yeah. But I think for the purpose of Heroes Day, thank you so much for yeah. having invited. Yeah. And I mean, this is not a, a situation where, where one would say you want to win an argument. Yeah. My, only, my only contribution that I want to make is, is because it was kept away from people for too long. What was the real, what really happened? I hear you. What are the true facts? Yes. Not to win an argument, but what happened really happened in Namibia. I have a lot of respect Wonderful. for the people who fought the liberation struggle. Thank you, Hank. A lot of them. Thank you, Hank. And, uh, and, and, and I hope that we, that was a mutual respect for all of us. And let's build from here because we've got serious problems that we have to solve. Indeed, indeed Hank. Thank you yeah. very much. I appreciate your time. That's uh, Hank Maj. Uh, Hank Maj is... Uh, President of the Republican Party, and uh, of course, uh, he was on the show tonight with uh, Dr. Libertin Amadila, who was uh, Namibia's Deputy Prime Minister until 2010. She's in retirement for 11 years now, and uh, she was still very gracious enough to come out of retirement and talk to us tonight. Thank you for watching, and tell us in the comments box who are your heroes. Thank you.